Today, I'm gonna to walk you through a two-day on-site strategic planning agenda. So I've been noticing that a lot of people now that you're able to meet in person are starting to get realigned and refocused on their strategic plans, and they are doing the now in-person retreats. So I wanted to share with you the two-day agenda that we use for all of our clients and that we've used for the past 10 years. So my name is Anthony Taylor. I'm a facilitator at SME Strategy. We lead leadership teams and companies through the strategic planning process and our signature alignment program. We do that two days in person. So what I wanted to do was walk you through our typical uh, two day agenda. It's best practice. Uh, we found that it accomplishes all of the components of a strategic plan and does it in the best order possible. And I'm also accompanying uh, the rough timing with it. So I'm gonna go through each section. Uh, keep in mind that it's always subject to change because some sections go longer and some sections go shorter, but we found that this is the best way to lead a two-day offsite if you're trying to do a full strategic plan. If you only have one day to do a strategic planning agenda, do not adapt this agenda. This is specifically designed for two days and if you're trying to go through the entire process fully and completely. So. Before we get into the specific timing of the agenda, I'd like to just do a quick overview of the five sections of our strategic planning process. So fundamentally, when you do a strategic plan, you should go through all of these stages. Where are we now? Where are we going? What's gonna get in our way? What do we need to do? And then how are we gonna implement our plan? So where are we now is basically a current state. Where are we going is a future state. What will get in our way is a risk analysis as well as doing values and behaviors. What do we need to do includes prioritization and goal setting. And then how do we implement our plan talks about action planning, communication planning, and critical capacities. So really go from where you are to where you wanna to get to. And we do that all in the two days. It requires extreme focus. It requires preparation. So we do pre-work, including interviews and surveys, in addition to the two days so that we can accomplish this uh, fully in the least amount of time possible. So if you're looking for somebody to facilitate this process so that you don't have to do it yourself, be sure to reach out to us at smestrategy.net. Happy to have a conversation, see how it fits. I'll also put a caveat that some organizations might need three days or more. So if you're a larger organization, uh, you need to think about more implementation constraints or have deeper conversations about certain issues. This might not be the best agenda for you. We always do two days and sometimes we do three or four depending on the needs. So we'll get into the first part of day one. So we open up every strategy session with an introduction, uh, talk about you know the role of the facilitator, what are we here to do. We share our ground rules and make sure everybody has the same goals for the next two days. Um, we made a video about our ground rules if you're interested in unpacking that a little bit deeper. Uh, we start off the two days by talking about uh, our wins, celebrating how we got to where we are. We found that uh, so many organizations keep looking forward, forward, forward. They never take time to look back. So we start by celebrating so that it sets a positive tone for the meeting and for the whole uh, strategic planning process. Next, we do an icebreaker game called Survival. Uh, it sets the tone for strategic choices and it helps people, you know, open up with the icebreaker, you know, talk with each other and really begin that collaboration because collaboration and alignment are fundamental to this process being successful. Next, we take a quick break because people are already tired by this point. Uh, next, we get into a SWOT analysis. So it's, you know, pretty standard as part of uh, strategic planning to do a SWOT. Um, we look at it as a foundation for all strategic planning, looking at our strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats, so everybody has the same understanding in terms of where we're at and that we can kind of align expectations and align needs and understanding. From there, we get into lunch. Uh, sometimes you might have a half hour lunch. And then we move into an environmental scan. That's when we look at the trends that are happening in the world around us so that you can better understand what's happening outside of your four walls, not just within your four walls. Once we've completed the uh, environmental scan, then we look at a vision. You know, some people ask us, you know, why don't do a five or 10 year vision? Why do you do a three year vision? And the answer is because most people don't have that long term strategic planning, long term visioning. So three years is far enough out that it's strategic, but close enough that you can tie your action plans to it. 
So making sure that you have that balance between short, medium, and long-term thinking is critical for an effective process. For us, we use three years because it ties everything else together. Have another little break. Uh, and then we finish the day by talking about mission and purpose. You know, why do we exist? Who do we focus on? And how do we focus our energy to one core customer? You know, depending on the timing, some of these might take longer or shorter, but they're all critical conversations that you need to have to make sure your team is aligned towards one destination. Uh, just a quick note that we do have a course on how to lead this, our Align Strategy course, which will walk you through how to lead each of these steps. And you can get that by going to smestrategy.net slash course. So each of these modules is a challenge to lead on its own, but being able to lead them in sequence and build on them successfully uh, is really critical to making day one be successful. So now moving into day two, uh, we start the day by just debriefing from the day before. Um, if anybody had any ahas, any reflections, any thoughts, we also use that time to finish any exercises that might not have been complete the day before. Typically, mission has a little bit of a sticking point uh, because people need to get really clear on the idea of prioritization and choosing a, a core customer or core group to focus on. Next, we move into our organizational values and behaviors. So getting aligned and clear on how we do things around here and what is the behaviors that are going to get us to that next place. You might have heard that culture eats strategy for breakfast. So you need to include uh, culture and values as part of your strategic planning conversation because otherwise your implementation is going to fall flat. So when we do this process, we consider not only the two days of planning, but the 1100 days of implementation as well. So don't forget how much goes into the actual getting the plan done versus just the planning. So once we have the values and behaviors complete, that's when we move into risks and roadblocks. The biggest difference between our process and other people's processes is that they don't include risks and roadblocks. So a lot of teams walk into a strategic planning process and they say, you know, we know what we want to get done because they're prioritizing based on wants. Through our process, you prioritize based on needs, <clears throat> which is going to help you get a greater outcome, which is going to help everybody be really clear about why you're focusing on what you're focusing on, and it's going to support greater implementation. So one of the reasons that I said that we don't do one day strategic planning sessions is because it doesn't give you the time to do the risks as part of it. So you're going to have a flawed plan because you tried to rush the creation of the plan. So that's why as a minimum, we do two days of strategic planning to help make sure that the process is complete. Now, at this point, you might have noticed that we haven't talked about any implementation yet, as in no actions. And that's because it's critical that your team is aligned on where you are, where you're going, and what's going to get in the way before you start worrying about what you're going to do. Most teams try to get right into the doing and they forget about why. That's why you'll end up with unclear visions, unclear missions, like the wrong priorities and no buy-in is because there wasn't enough structure to set up successful implementation. So whatever you do, don't shortchange the process and make sure that your team has enough time to do the appropriate amount of planning to help your organization get to where it needs to go. So we've looked at where we are, where we're going, what's gonna get in the way, and next we move into what do we need to do to get there. So this is now after lunch, we look at prioritizing, so focusing on a couple strategic priorities instead of focusing on everything and doing it poorly. From that prioritization, we move into goal setting and objective setting. So if you're using OKRs, this is when you would transition to the OKR process of looking at objectives, which are qualitative, and goals, which are quantitative, and then actions uh, or key results that you're going to move into. So for us, we take those strategic priorities, break them down into objectives and goals, and then cascade that into actions. So once we have a high level action plan, then we talk about communication planning. You know, how are we going to engage the rest of the organization? How are we going to share what we need to share and how are we going to make sure everybody knows about the plan and what they need to do? And we haven't included it into this because we're the only ones that do it, but we talk about our critical capacities for strategy implementation. So we find that implementing a strategic plan and if you're a CEO, elevating your leadership team, it's not just about doing tasks within your plan. 
It's about focusing on the environment around your plan. The alignment, the communication, the roles and responsibilities, the culture, the tracking, the leadership, and the change management. Like Those are all the things that you as a CEO and you as a leadership team need to foster and develop while implementing your plan. Otherwise, your organization is going to grow in terms of milestones, but it's not going to grow in terms of capacity and bandwidth. And then, so you're going to get stuck. So that's why we always include our critical capacities as part of our two-day agenda, but we didn't include it here because you probably wouldn't talk about that on your own time. So again, if you'd like us to come in and talk to your team about that, we'd be happy to. So we finish once we do the communication planning and how are we going to unite the rest of the organization. That's when we get into a recap of the entire process, looking at where we are now, where we're going, what's going to get in our way, what do we need to put in place to move us forward, and then how are we going to engage the rest of the organization. And once you're done those two days, then you can begin with the implementation. Of course, you're probably going to have to refine your goals, refine your action plan, refine your communication plan. But if you followed this agenda to a T, and whether you've worked with us or taken our course, you know, you'll have all of the components you need. You'll have a clear and aligned leadership team. You'll know where you need to focus. You'll have quick wins outlined in order to move forward. And then you'll just have to move forward and uh, get your plan done. So I hope that helps give you an overview of how to go through a full two-day strategic planning offsite using our agenda. I hope it helps you focus the energy that you only include the things you need to and you don't include the things you don't. You might have noticed that there wasn't too much team building activity. Um, that's because when we do a two-day strategy offsite, we rather focus on the highest value activities. And in 95% of the cases, you know, a fun team building activity isn't going to provide the most amount of value for you and your team. So uh, if you have any questions about this agenda and how to lead it, be sure to reach out to us, smestrategy.net slash contact. You can take our course on how to lead your own strategic planning process, and we'll teach you everything step-by-step step and the questions to ask. And of course, if you'd like us to uh, facilitate that for you, we'd be happy to, either doing it in person. We also lead the same process virtually. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this uh, agenda is helpful as you plan for your upcoming offsite. Once again, my name is Anthony Taylor, Managing Partner at SME Strategy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.